who's ready to talk about some carbon fiber running shoes. If you've been wondering what the best choice might be, let's do a comparison. I've got models here from a number of different brands that I have been running in and testing. So let's start with the ones that are getting the most press. We have the Nike Vaporfly and the Alpha Fly. So you may notice this is the colorway from the Vaporfly 2. I did indeed test the Vaporfly 3 and in fact wore it to a race. You can see that the outsole peeled away. The shoe had 10 total miles on it. So totally makes sense. Every time around, they're trying to take a little more off the outsole and put a little more cushion in. And the result is it's just not that durable. Vaporfly. This is definitely one of the bounciest shoes that I have ever run in. And I definitely feel faster. So I really like using them for speed work. And it is why I opted to wear the three for a 10K race. Now, a couple things to note with it is that Nike, super narrow. These are hard to get on, but not as hard as the Alpha Fly. So they are a very narrow fit. And because of the way the two is situated, it can at times feel a little like you are running on a rail. So it's not a super stable shoe. You need to know that. It is ideally for most people, probably 5K, 10K, maybe up to a half marathon. That is where then the Alpha Fly comes in. So there is still a huge stackite here um, and you are getting that bounce, but it is just not quite the same squishy spring as the Vaporfly. So it feels more stable. You can see here that it is even like along the bottom side. It's more stable. This is your marathon shoe. Again, as noted, it is kind of, it's the booty fit. So it is tough to get on. These are not made for people with wide feet. End of story. In both the Alpha Fly and the Vapor Fly, when you first put them on, you will notice that they do have some pretty intense arch support in them. And that is intentional. I was uncomfortable with it at first because it is such a different feeling. But after just running for a little bit, it goes away. I did not notice it whatsoever. So know that that is there, it is intentional. The Alpha Fly is what we've seen Kipchoge in when he went for his sub two marathon. The Vapor Fly is what I am seeing a ton of elites race in though. So these are probably the two most prevalent out there when you are looking at the elite runners, but coming in hot, Adidas. So this is what the male Boston Marathon winner was wearing and Hence, I got real excited to test them out. <laughs> this is the Adidas Adi Zero. It also has a decent stack height. It has great cushion. It does not have that quite the same bouncy spring as I felt in the Alpha Fly or the Vapor Fly, but I really liked them. One thing I like about them is the fit is better. They are not so narrow, so more folks can actually wear these and feel decent in them. You will notice with almost all of these carbon fiber shoes, the tongue, super, super thin, and even you can see my hand through here. It's kind of like a hard nylon mesh so that these shoes can be as light as possible and as breathable as possible. So that you're gonna see kind of across the board. I really like this and could 100% see myself running a half or a marathon in them. Oh, am I committing to a marathon again? No, not publicly. So I like these. I would definitely recommend. Next on the chopping block, we've got the New Balance. So this is the super fuel cell, super comp fuel cell. It also has that booty-like fit. It is a little bit thicker material than the others. So maybe a slightly warmer shoe when you want your feet to be as dry and cool as possible. While it does have 
a pretty decent stack height. The foam does not have that squishy responsiveness. And here's why that matters. In these carbon fiber shoes, they are seeing the results of speed come from that combination of cushion or foam and the carbon fiber plate. So this to me felt the most like my regular running shoe, but also the one where I really noticed it had a rocker to it. So it is doing extra work to try and give you that immediate roll forward. So not everyone's gonna agree with me, but this one is not my top pick in terms of a carbon fiber shoe. I do think it's a great shoe. I just think New Balance has a little more work to do on these. Finally in this roundup is what the female winner of the Boston Marathon was running, which is our on running shoes. So this is the Cloud Boom Echo 3. I tested out the original Cloud Boom three years ago. It was tight and kind of felt like a racing flat. This I very much like. So you can even see the carbon fiber plate there. All these companies are looking for like, where can we cut weight? So they decided to cut some weight here from the side. Others, you'll see big, big gaps in the bottom of the shoe. In this one, the Cloud Boom Echo 3, you will also notice Ooh, no pods on the bottom. So you will not be getting rocks stuck in there, which was one of my complaints. It is also soft and it felt really good to run in. So again, maybe not quite the bounce that you're getting from the Vaporfly, but I 100% knew when I put these on and did my speed workout that the shoe was giving me that little bit extra. So. It is a very nice amount of cushion. Again, it is super thin, very breathable. I, I'm impressed. I feel like On has really shifted things here recently. And instead of shoes that felt kind of stiff to me in the past, they now actually have a really great cushion to them. Almost all of these are running in the same price range. <laughs> So you're looking at close to $300 for pretty much all of them. They all have roughly the same lifespan, which is closer to 200 miles. I will say, as noted with the Vaporfly 3, it had a 10 mile lifespan before it lost some of the outsole. But folks have noted with the Vaporfly, because of this fresh foam and how high it is, that they're noticing performance degradation kind of the longer they have the shoe. So the higher your stack, the more cushion, you can expect there's gonna be a little degradation over time because that cushion is going to keep breaking down. So it's not the carbon fiber plate, it is really the amount of cushion they're putting into all of these. I will say probably takes the most getting used to, kind of feeling the stack height in this. Um, not much to get used to, just felt pretty good pretty close to your normal shoe. Also pretty close to your normal shoe, not a lot to get used to. Those are my top five picks. They are by no means all the carbon fiber shoes. I also have the Hoka Bondi X. I would consider that like your, I'm not trying to be super fast, but I want a really cushioned shoe and I wanna see what the carbon fiber can do, shoe. Um, I have raced in the Saucony Endorphin Pro previously, and I liked them. However, have not yet slipped my foot into some of the newest models, so can't speak to it just yet. Hopefully that gave you some information so that as you are out shopping, you can see what's gonna work for you. As always, if you have other questions, please drop them below. Please give me a like, subscribe. Tell me what else you wanna see, particularly when it comes to shoes. I'm writing a ton of content about them, but if you wanna see videos, let me know.